This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 924, an excerpt from the book, The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It, by Kyle Cease. And I am Dan, I'm your host. Welcome to Optimal Finance Daily, where today we have a book excerpt for you, and I'm here each and every weekday reading to you from some of the best blogs and occasionally books on the planet. And before we get to our post today, investing can be hard and confusing, especially with ticker symbols and charts flying back and forth on business channels like it's the runway at LAX. But why should something so important to your family's future be left up to the talking heads on CNBC? Enter the Motley Fool. They give you straight talk without the fancy jargon and noise you're used to. Their flagship service, Stock Advisor, gives you two brand new stock recommendations every month with daily analysis and coverage coming directly to your inbox daily. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.fool.com slash optimal finance daily to learn more and claim an exclusive discount only for listeners. Now today I'm featuring a new author and a book excerpt actually. So let's give you a little bit about the author. After 20 years of achieving what he thought were his dreams of being a headlining touring comedian and actor, Kyle Cease suddenly discovered that the belief when something happens, I will be happy, is a complete lie. Following the calling of his heart, he decided to quit his stand-up career at its peak, and now, as a transformational comedian and New York Times best-selling author of I Hope I Screw This Up, he brings his one-of-a-kind wisdom to sold-out audiences in his Evolving Out Loud live stage show and reaches millions online. In his book, The Illusion of Money, Kyle shares why our obsession with money is costing us millions and how we can begin to see ourselves for the perfection that we are so that we can bring ourselves to the world in an authentic way. You can find more info at kylecease.com. That's K-Y-L-E-C-E-A-S-E dot com. And with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book, The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It, by Kyle Cease. This might be shocking, but do you know that the money you have in your account isn't yours? Seriously, you don't own that money. I'm not saying you're a criminal or anything, I'm just saying that before that money was in your account, it was in someone else's, and eventually, you'll exchange it for something like a mini trampoline or a commemorative plate collection, and it will be in someone else's account probably the Mini Trampoline and Commemorative Plate Collection Corporation of America's account. They pretty much have a corner on the market when it comes to both of those things. Even though money is constantly being circulated through our society, we almost all have this subconscious way of acting like the money we have is ours and only ours. This belief that makes us feel like we own the money we have is also the thing that keeps all the other money in the world out of reach. The belief that we own our money creates an equal and opposite belief that we don't have access to all the other money in the world. Stay with me here for a second. The more someone believes that they own the $2,000 that's in their bank account, and the more protective about it they are, the more they enforce the belief that the other trillions and trillions of dollars in the world are not theirs. It's like if you went to the beach and instead of just enjoying all the sand around you, you wanted to own the sand. All you have with you at the moment is this one backpack, so you start shoveling as much sand as you can into it. Now you're wearing a 100-pound backpack of sand and you can't move. You also can't take it off because you don't want someone to steal it. There are millions of pounds of sand all around you that you don't have access to because of your limited belief that you own what you have in your backpack. This is how we are with money. We trap ourselves in the box of what we currently have and cut ourselves off from the unlimited flow of abundance all around us because we don't understand that no one owns the sand. We're all just enjoying it for a little while. What if you didn't believe that you only had the money in your account and instead understood that you have access to all the money in the world? Well, you do. You have access to it all and so does everyone else. When you embody that and release yourself from the small story of your current circumstances, you will start to elevate your perspective and create a value that aligns with all the abundance that is out there for you. The belief of ownership is a stagnant vibration of fear that prevents us from shifting into a dimension of flow where there is less ownership but more abundance and freedom for everyone. The concept of owning anything is a completely mind-made illusion. By attempting to own something, we're trying to make that thing a part of what we are. The mind is constantly trying to build itself up by latching onto all of these things in the outside world so that it can protect itself. 
When we believe that we own something, we're saying that it's ours and nobody else's, and if someone tries to take that from us, they're attacking us directly. The idea of owning something actually makes us extremely vulnerable. It's like getting a new car and being obsessed with making sure that it doesn't get scratched. The first time that a new car gets scratched or dented can cause some people literal pain in their bodies. It's almost as if their own body got injured, sometimes worse. When we buy into the mind-made belief that we can own anything at all, we create an instant fear of losing what we believe we own, which feels like losing a part of ourselves. I was talking to a friend recently who told me she doesn't buy expensive things because she's scared they could be scratched and damaged. And I asked, is that how you treat relationships too? Do you not want to have the ultimate relationship because you could lose it? Is that actually preventing you from receiving lots of money because you could lose it too? She had a predetermined belief that she was going to lose something, which is likely preventing her from receiving it in the first place, which is the same thing as losing it, without the ability to at least enjoy it for the time that she would have had it. She's also missing out on all the growth that might have come with that experience. Often people think that freedom will show up when they have tons of money and can buy anything they want, but in many ways, it's the complete opposite. If you're buying things from the energy of wanting to own something so that you can become more, then you're adding more stuff to your mental identity and it will likely cause you to become less connected to yourself and the freedom that you actually are. We never really own anything. We're just borrowing it for a little while and then either it's going to leave or we're going to leave. Under the belief of ownership, we're setting ourselves up to experience suffering because we believe we're losing something that is a part of us instead of being a space where the things in our life are free to come and go. Life becomes much easier when we understand from the start that nothing is ever ours forever. Nothing can come with us when we die. Not our car, not our job, not our lover, not our body. When we let go of the need to own things or have experiences last forever, we make room for amazing things and experiences to come in so much faster. Even the best experience you can imagine having, if you could have it for the rest of your life, would still be blocking experiences that are even beyond that from coming in. So with this new awareness, we can stop trying to own life and allow it to show up in all the unique and unexpected ways that it wants to. This kind of surrendering is unbelievably freeing. If you let go of having to manage everything in your life, then your life will be managed better than it ever has. This is letting it all go and allowing it all to show up for you. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It by Kyle Cease. And you can come by kylecease.com to learn more. Now, have you ever wondered how to invest or struggled to understand how to make your money work for you? You'll probably want to hear about The Motley Fool then. The Motley Fool was founded 25 years ago in a garage by brothers Tom and David Gardner. In those 25 years, Motley Fool members got access to recommendations like AOL in 1994, before You've Got Mail was a movie, Amazon in 1997, before Prime Day was a thing, Netflix in 2004, before you were binging Stranger Things, and Marvel, now Walt Disney, in 2004, when Tobey Maguire was still Spider-Man. Every month, Tom and David each pick a stock and provide a deep dive and analysis exclusively for members of their stock advisor service. Members get exclusive access to the Stock Advisor website with daily updates that cut through the noise of the financial market. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.fool.com slash optimal finance daily to learn more and claim an exclusive discount only for listeners. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your day and I'm gonna see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.